Hey guys, it's Eddie. Today I want to shoot a quick little video on capacitors. Uh, I want to start this introduction as this video is for trained HVAC technicians only. If you're a homeowner and you think that your capacitor is bad, please call a professional. These things hold a very high voltage and they can shock you. Alright, so if you think that your capacitor is bad, please call a professional. Don't attempt any of this stuff on your own. What we have here are about 20-22 capacitors that have blown over a course of about 3-4 days. This is what I did. These are all the ones that I've replaced in about 4 days. Uh, kind of go over what a capacitor is, what it does, and why they blow. So you, you have start capacitors and you have run capacitors. You have uh, single capacitors and you have dual capacitors. Alright, so with a single capacitor, this is just typically just going to use to start a fan motor. Dual capacitors are going to start fan motors and compressors. They're going to run as small as of about 25 microfarads, and they can go all the way up to 70 microfarads. The biggest one I've got here is probably a 45 microfarad. All right. They run 370 volts and they run 440 volts. Now, pretty much what a capacitor does is it, that it alters the current of the windings in a motor and that's going to create a rotating magnetic field. So this is just going to kind of push the windings in a circle and that's what gets the motor started. Basically that's what a capacitor does. A run capacitor is going to stay in the circuit the whole time that the motor is running or the compressor. A start capacitor is only in the circuit at the very initial start. So once the start, then the capacitor drops out. But all these capacitors are going to stay in the circuit the whole time the motor is running. So when you get a service call and you know a lot of times one of the motors will be running like the fan motor would be running and the compressor is not all you hear is just a big hum uh, chances are the capacitor is bad if you uh, get into the unit and you uh, find that the top is bubbled and it's swollen up like one of these that's a sure sign that the capacitor is bad uh, some of the things that's going to cause these compressors to go out like this is excessive heat. Now during this period we had temperatures in the range of about 105 to 110 degrees. Alright so when you couple that with dirty condensing units, overcharged, uh, loose connections, anything that's going to make the system work harder than it's designed to, you're going to have prone to have uh, capacitors that blown. So when I replace the capacitors, one thing, I always make sure the condensers are clean. Uh, make sure all my connections are tight. And I do an amp draw on the compressor and the fan to make sure everything's within specs. Uh, especially when it's hitting 95, 100 degrees outside, you're going to run into it a lot. Alright, part of, part of your preventive maintenance is we should be checking capacitors to make sure they're within specifications. Like this particular one here is a 60 UF. All right, so when I measure that, I need to be within plus six percent, plus or minus six percent. And the same thing on the fan side. This is the five UF for the condensing fan motor, 60 UF for the compressor. So we're going to I'm going to show you how to measure these, and we just got to make sure we're within six percent. All right, you're going to have terminals marked term, you're going to have one marked common, you're going to have one marked fan. So when you're testing them, you're going to go between common, common, common and compressor, and you're going to go between common and fan. So these two should be five, these two should be, whatever it was, 60, yeah. So 60 and five. So you want to pull out your volt ohm meter, you want to look for this setting right here, it's MFD, it's a microfarad. So make sure you got your setting, your switch set on that. So if I'm testing my 60, I'm going to go 60 times 
3.06 so it's 3.6 is the range that I could be so on the low end it needs to be 56.4 if it's lower than that we need to replace the capacitor if it's higher than 63.6 or whatever it is you need to replace the capacitor so just make sure you stay within the range alright before you can test a capacitor you have to make sure you discharge it and there's a couple ways you really need to get you like a little resistor like a little 100 uh, ohm resistor and you'll just touch it between common and fan and common and start uh, you can get you a pair of needle nose plier and goes between common and fan common and compressor uh, you know the resistor is going to work better it's going to make sure you don't get shocked uh, you don't want to be touching these terminals when this thing's charged up it's not going to feel good so first thing we're going to do after we discharge it is stick one lead on the common one on the compressor should read right around 60 so it's reading 60.1 so that one is good alright then I'm going to go between common and fan it should read right around 5 and that one's reading perfect now in the case of this one here now if you look at these this is very often I mean, there's no need in testing that we know that's bad but when you're looking at this one I mean that one don't look that bad it's got a slight little bubble to it but it's not that bad this one's already been discharged we'll do it again should use a resistor but I don't have one so this is what we're going to do okay. common to fan we're at 4.9 this is a 535 capacitor and we're going to go between common and this one's reading 3.42 so the compressor side of this capacitor is bad so it doesn't necessarily have to look like this to be bad it could still be recessed in there uh, this is a the Versatec all right, it didn't blow the top, it didn't bubble. So there's, that's how you check your capacitors and see if they're any good or not. Now one of the questions I have to ask is why is it that are just about every one that I go on or they're all GE capacitors? Uh, you know, is it because all manufacturers use GE? I mean, I don't know all the different brands because everything I go on are GE's, but here's one different brand. Uh, here's another brand. I don't run into these very often. I've been doing this 20 years. And uh, we stock the Versatex where we're at. It's mostly what we put in. Uh, Gentech them are the two that we put in uh, I can tell you one thing if you pulled off a like a this is a little five microfarad capacitor if you pulled one of these off of a 30 year old air conditioner a five one would be way bigger than a 60 one is right now well I don't know about probably about the same size uh, you know back in the day they were a lot bigger a 60 microfarad comp capacitor and like one of them old G air conditioners my god they were twice as big as this alright uh, and I seem to find more 370 volts blown than I do 440 volts uh, so I think on the newer ones the size make a little bit of a difference uh, there seem to be a lot of 370s 440s we put in almost exclusively now uh, we don't even I don't even keep a 370 on my truck they're all 440s now uh, and we don't carry any GE capacitors we just tend to be replacing them a lot more uh, 
But like I said, it's probably only due to the fact that they use them more and uh, more brands use them than uh, Diversitex. I mean, I don't know how many manufacturers are going to use Diversitex or how many manufacturers are going to use Gentech. Um, seems like everybody's going to GE. So that may be the reason why we replace so many GE capacitors. Uh, here's one where the top's blown off. It's just filled with gooey stuff. Alright guys, so if you get some of the old air conditioners, the old GEs, uh, something's 25, 30 years old, uh, some of them capacitors have PCBs, which is a uh, not so friendly oil for humans. All, right, all the new capacitors got non-PCB oils in them. Uh, so if you get to one of them old air conditioners and the top's blown off of it, just be really careful. Uh, you don't want any of that stuff touching your skin. Get you some gloves. Uh, just play it safe. All right, just a quick recap. If you go to one that's blown the top off of it, check your uh, condenser to make sure it's clean. Check your con connections to make sure they're all tight. Check your amp draws. Uh, just make sure there's nothing's pulling too many amps. And check your refrigerant charge. That's going to cause it to pull too many amps also. All right. Uh, if all of them are good, these capacitors should last longer. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.